Hello, I am Stuti with IBM Kyoda team and in this video we will explain how event and flow data is stored in the aerial database and overview the Kyoda infrastructure. Now let us see how does Kyoda store data. Basically Kyoda stores data in aerial database which is a custom minute by minute event database created by the Kyoda dev team to capture and write events to the disk in slash store slash aerial. Event and flow data is stored locally in slash store slash aerial directory for each Curada appliance where ECCP process runs. Data is stored in one minute time chunks that can be seen in top right screenshot. In the below screenshot, we will understand how we receive, process and store data in Curada. Here, we can see there are two major component event collector and event processor. Event collector is responsible for parsing and normalizing incoming events and flows. On the other hand, event processor is responsible for correlation and storage. Here, protocol section collects data from log source protocols such as syslog, JDBC, OPSEC, logfile and SNMP. After that, we have Licensing component which monitors the number of incoming event to the system to manage input queues and EPS licensing. Event exceeding license limit will be sent to the burst queue. After that we have DSM normalized component which takes the raw data from the source device and parses the fields into the QR usable format. In other words, it takes the raw data and normalize it into a common structure. Then we have traffic analysis component. Here events from new or unknown log sources that were not detected in the past are redirected to the traffic analysis auto detection engine. When new log sources are discovered, a configuration request message to add the log source is sent to QDR console. If auto detection engine is disabled or you exceed your license limit, the new log sources are not added. After that, we have coalescing component. So the events are parsed and then coalesced based on the common attributes across events. Event coalescing helps improve performance and reduce storage impact. When a large burst of events is received that matches a specific criteria. For example, the multitude of similar events that can be created during a denial of service attack could be converted from hundreds of thousands of events into a few dozen of records while maintaining the count of the number of actual events received. Once this is done, events are sent to event processor for further processing. Wherein we have CRE component, the custom rule engine is responsible for processing events that are received by QRadar and comparing the same against defined rule. Keeping the track of systems involved in the incident over that time, generating notifications to users. When rules are triggered, responses or actions such as notifications, email messages, new events and offenses are generated. After that, we have event forwarding component. It applies routing rule for the system to forward data to offsite target, external syslog system, JSON system and other SIEMs. Then we have aerial writer component which is responsible for writing the data to database at the same time we will be having a streaming component which sends the real-time event data to QRadar console when a user is viewing event from the log activity tab and he or she is viewing the flows in the network activity tab now let us understand how QRadar searches work here we can see that an analyst is checking QRadar search result on the browser on the console, we can see two services are running. One is Tomcat, which is responsible for the UI, and another is Aerial Proxy service that runs on the console only, and it is responsible for proxying the search request to all of the Aerial query service within the deployment. We can see that there are two event collector present, which will receive, parse, and forward the events through the curator event processor as the data received for further processing. For processing of events, we have three event processor as of now present in this 
deployment screenshot. Similarly, we can see that there is a Kubeflow collector present along with the QNI, which will be responsible for collecting the flows and it will be sending the same to flow processor for further processing. Along with this, we also have two data nodes present over here. And we can see that there is one common service aerial query service that is running on flow processor, event processor and data nodes. So aerial query service is responsible for actually querying, filtering, aggregating the event and flow records on the disk. Now let us see how this search actually works in QRR. So suppose in step one, analyst will start a query in log activity tab. In response to this, in step two, aerial proxy service will send a search request to all the aerial query service present in the deployment. After that, aerial query service will be aggregating the events and flow record on the disk in step three, and it will send those information to console. Once this is done, user will be able to see the search result in the log activity tab, which is the step four. So this is how events come to Curadar. They are processed and stored once the events are available for storing with the help of aerial writer they are also available for real-time streaming with the help of streaming component in this way an analyst will be able to see the real-time events in the log activity tab also real-time flows in the network activity tab thank you for joining us if you need more assistance use the links in the description